Good singing. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Our greatest comfort is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much for sharing. At this time, we have this wonderful opportunity. And, uh, you know, we're all here cozy together in our church family. But little do we know, we are addressing our friends and our neighbors who may be tuning in on the internet to Florence Baptist Church to hear the good word of the gospel uh, and Pastor Sorum's message. And we are so thankful, ladies and gentlemen, for your attendance and your attention to our church out there. So we want you to know that you are part of our church family. We love you, we care about you, and we are so glad that we're able to provide this ministry to you through the internet. So we're using modern technology to its best possible use, and that is presenting the message of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And here's our pastor. Once again, welcome, folks. Amen. If you've got your Bible, turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 41. Believe it or not, the title of tonight's message is Fear. Fear. The last song that we sang uh, uh, fits in perfect with my message. I was not um, um, planning on preaching tonight. I was supposed to, we were supposed to have a missionary here, and he called this morning, and his, um, his wife um, is 32 weeks along in her pregnancy, and she was having some very severe complications with it. And you know, turn me down a little bit. And uh, so, number 10, I think it is. And anyway, the, um, the complications were that she went into labor at 32 weeks, and they thought that she was going to have to deliver the baby, but they were able to get the um, uh, congr contraction stopped, and so now she's got to be in the hospital from now until the baby's born. But uh, we just need to take and pray for the Johnson family. And, and um, uh, so he was supposed to be preaching tonight, and he called, he said, I hate to do this to you, but he said, uh, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> I said, okay. So this afternoon I uh, sat and I prayed and I uh, worked up the message on fear. And so I hope you uh, enjoy it. But Isaiah chapter uh, 41, verse 10, it says, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for all that you've done for us. I just pray now that you'll guide and direct this message, that everything that's done will be for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. On July 1st, 1994, this verse uh, became real to me in a way that uh, it probably, most verses don't uh, come real to anybody, but on July 1st, 1994, we were in a plane crash in um, Shyokton, Wisconsin, and uh, I thought I was going to die. I really did. I was laying there, and I was looking up at the sky. I saw puffy clouds floating over, and I said, Lord, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to come home. If you want to take me home, I'm ready to go. And um, after how many people do you know that's ever survived a plane crash? And uh, so you're looking at one of them. But, you know, as I was uh, laying there, God brought this verse to my mind. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. But, you know, there's a lot of things that 
we can be afraid of, isn't there? There's an awful lot of things in life that we can be afraid of. How many of you have ever been afraid of anything? I think all of us uh, in this room at one time or another has been afraid of something. And, uh, you know, all along the pathway of human history, a uh, man has been afraid of certain things. You know, one of the first incidents we see in the Bible uh, was uh, in the fall of man. Uh, there were others like Jacob in Genesis chapter 31, verse 31. Daniel, uh, in Daniel 8, 17, while well, he was in the lion's den. I don't know about you, but if I was Daniel in the lion's den, I think I would be a little fearful, wouldn't you? <laughs> and uh, so here we see Daniel. We saw Nehemiah. Um, he was uh, fearful in Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 2. And then there's a foolish servant in Matthew chapter 25, 25. It says, and I was afraid and I went and hid my tal your ta thy talents in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. You know, God does not want us to be fearful. Did you know that? He doesn't want us to be fearful. Although he did give us the emotion of fear, um, he doesn't want us to be fearful. Do you know that over 150 times in the Bible, um, the Bible talks about fear and how that we're not supposed to be fearful? Well, if God says it once, we should take it to heart, shouldn't we? But if he says it 150 times, then maybe there's something really there that God wants for us. But you know, I want to look tonight at fear for just a little bit and um, because I feel that each of us suffer from time to time from fear and many times we let fear have control over the situations that we're going through in life. And I want to show you some things about that tonight, but um, what causes fear? You know, there are many causes of fear and, and I've just a few listed uh, that I feel that we uh, need to look at tonight. But the first thing is this. Sin is the first cause of fear. Sin is the first cause of fear. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 10 it says, And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid. Fear is the first cause. Uh, tax that uh, um, uh, conscience pays on guilt. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they realized that they had sinned against who? They had sinned against God, hadn't they? And they were what? They were afraid of what God could do to them. After all, what did God say? God said, if you take of that tree... What's going to happen? You're going to surely die. Well, did they know what death was? I don't think they knew what death was. And the reason I don't believe they knew what death was, they, who did they ever see die? They were the only two there. They'd never seen anybody die before. Oh, they might have seen an animal, but I don't think that either even registered with them what death really was. But you know, when Achan sinned, and took the gold and the silver and the Babylonian garments after the victory at Jericho, uh, he had them hid in the ground. He had them hidden. Why did he hide them in the ground? Because he was afraid that somebody would see that he had them. He was afraid of what the consequences were going to be if somebody saw that he had taken something out of Jericho that he was not supposed to take. After all, what did God say? Do not take anything out of the city. It is all mine. It's all mine. God says everything that's in the city of Jericho that you take in the spoils is mine. Do not take anything for yourself. And here we see that Achan uh, decided he was going to do it his way. And uh, uh, he went and he hid his sin, didn't he, in the ground. He was hoping nobody would ever see it. But there are 36 men that lost their lives because of it. You know, when we sin, we become afraid that someone is going to find out what we did. Aren't they? 
You know, we get afraid that somebody's going to find out what we did that was wrong. We'll try to hide our sin. We'll try to compromise our sin by saying, well, it's really not sin. After all, everybody's doing it. It can't be sin, right? Everybody's doing it. We become afraid God's going to find out. Well, God already knows. God knows everything. God knows if we sin. But you know, the lack of faith also causes fear. The lack of faith causes fear. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were formed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We become afraid because we do not feel anyone is looking out for us. Nobody's looking out for our better interest. Nobody's looking out to help us, and we become fearful of it. You know, men fear each other when they have not faith in each other. You know, the same is true with our relationship with God. Fear comes when we do not have the faith that we should in God. In Isaiah chapter 35, verse 4, it says, To them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with recompense. He will come and what? Save you. You know, listen, we need to have faith that God can take care of any situation. You know, not believing something will happen will cause us to fear. In Genesis chapter 24 and verse 15, it says, And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out with her pitcher uh, upon her shoulder. You know, I don't believe that Abraham's servant had faith that God was going to work quite that quickly. After all, he went to find a bride for who? Isaac. He went to find a bride for Isaac. He went to this well, and the first thing he said, he prayed. He says, God, help me to find the woman that you would have me to have for Isaac, my master. Before he was done speaking, there she was. He's going, is this really the woman? God, man, you really work fast. You really work quickly. You know, think about that for a minute. If he had had just a little bit of faith, he would have said, you know what? God can do anything. If uh, I pray, God's going to answer my prayer, and guess what? There's going to be a woman there. Poof! There she was. Abracadabra, you know, there she is. You know, <clears throat> not believing something's going to happen can cause us to have fear. You know, Matthew 8, 26 says this, And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Listen, there was a great storm going on in this verse. Jesus was in the bottom part of the ship sleeping. He was tired. He had a hard day. And he went in the, the back part of the boat, and he's sound asleep. And this wind is blowing, and the waves are crashing over the top of the boat, and the boat's filling with water, and it's about ready to sink. They went and they woke up Jesus. He said, we're going to die. Right? He went out and he says, peace be still. Boom, just like that. The wind ceased. He looked at him and he says, oh, ye of little faith, what's the matter with you? You could have did this if you would have had a little more faith. Listen, they became afraid because they did not have enough faith. You know, we need to have faith that God can do anything but fail. If we, would, if we could only do that, we would not have as much fear in our lives as we do. You know, many times we don't have enough faith believing God can get us out of our trials. Yeah, 
How many of you are going through a bad thing right now? Just raise your hand. I don't care. Yep. I am too. Okay. Now, do you know what happens many times is this. God takes us through those hard times to try us, to see if we're going to have enough faith in him to help us get through it. Amen? You know, I know many times in my life God has taken me through some really, really, really tough trials just to see if I was going to be who he wanted me to be and make me a little bit stronger. You know, the reason he takes us through trials is to make our spiritual life stronger. You may say, well, I don't like going through trials. I don't care. I'm not God. He's going to take you through trials. You say, well, I don't know why God takes me through so many. It's to make you strong. I used to be a weightlifter. You can't tell now, but I used to be years ago. And you know what? Every time I went to the gym, I would take and push myself to try to lift a little bit more than what I lifted the time before. I might only lift two and a half pounds more or five pounds more. But each time I lifted more and more and more and more and more. Why? Because I kept at it. And God's the same way. God's going to bring a trial into your life to make you stronger so the next trial he brings, you can make it through that one too because he's going to continue to bring trials in your life to make you a stronger Christian until the day he takes you home. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. So get ready for him. You know, many times we don't have enough faith believing that God can get us out of what we're going through. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6, it says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Did you hear that verse? Read it again, because I'll tell you what, I had this verse underlined about ten times in my Bible. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear what man can do it to me. Listen to me. As long as you are saved, I guarantee that God will not let anybody do anything to you more than you can handle. Period. It's the way it is. But you know what? We're also afraid of the unknown, aren't we? We're afraid of the unknown. <coughs> not knowing what is ahead of us can cause fear. What will happen if America is overthrown by another nation? I don't know, but I don't want to be here for it. Amen? <laughs> you know, what will my children grow up to be? What <clears throat> will heaven be like? Where will I spend eternity if I were to die right now? What will happen to my car or home if I can't pay for them? You know, there's a lot of unknowns in life, isn't there? There's a lot of unknowns that we go through where we fear the future. Not knowing what tomorrow will bring can cause us to fear the unknown. You know, there are many who are in hospitals today who fear what tomorrow might bring. Many are going to be having surgery tomorrow. Many are going to be having different tests and things, and they have no idea what tomorrow will hold. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Listen, we need to come into God's presence and pray and ask him to help us to get through the things of the unknown. But what is death like? What is it like to be dead? How many have ever been dead? I have. I've been clinically dead. And uh, you say, well, what do you mean by that? They took my heart out. They took my heart out of my body. Now, if that ain't being dead, I don't know what is. Amen? <coughs> but you know, I woke back up again. But what is death really like? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 to 17, it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall raise first. Then we, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You know, one of the greatest fears a person has is death and unknowing what's going to happen after you die. You know, <clears throat> so many times people are in the hospital and, and uh, I go to visit them and things like that and they, and they fear death. I just did a memorial service for uh, Cindy Powers' mom and, and uh, Melanie's grandma. And uh, um, the Wednesday before she went into eternity, I went to visit her. And I walked into her bedroom, and she was sitting on the bed, and she looked at me, and she goes, oh, I'm so glad to see you. And I said, why? Because she says, I'm afraid that if I were to die right now, I wouldn't go to heaven. She sat in church service after church service after church service right over there, heard me preach, heard the invitation, and yet she refused it until two days before she, got, she went into eternity. And I believe that God was keeping her here so that she would get saved. But listen, she was afraid of what it was like to die. After she asked the Lord Jesus Christ into her heart, she looked at me and she said, I'm not afraid anymore. Wow. Wow. I'll tell you what, that is really cool. <coughs> you know, we have the assurance if we're saved, what's going to happen to us? Did you know that? We have the assurance of what will happen to us the minute we close our eyes in death. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 to 8, it says, Therefore we are all so confident knowing that whilst we were at home in the body, we were absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to going to heaven. Amen? Amen. Absent from this body that aches all the time. And you get up in the morning, you go, oh, another day. You know? But just think, get into heaven, you, no more night, no more day. Hey, woo! Walk in the streets of gold. How much better can we have it than that? You know, we know, if we know Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, we should look forward to seeing him in glory. We should look forward to what's across the Jordan. But you know, the absence of love brings fear. The absence of love brings fear. 1 John chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, it says, Therein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because, as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts our out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Wow. You know, hatred causes fear in the heart. You know, when we do not feel people love us, we become afraid of what the outcome is going to be down the road, don't we? You know, the older I get... You know, this is just me now, maybe not you, but this is me. The older I get, the more fearful I am if my wife was taken that I would be alone. Do you know that? I'm afraid of that. And the reason I am is I have no family here. 
My family is 3,000 miles away. My kids live in Wisconsin and in Georgia. And I have no family in Arizona, no one. And sometimes it's fearful thinking about what the outcome will be when your spouse is taking away from you and you're all by yourself. You have no one to care for you. You know, it's, it's fearful thinking about that. And I never thought I'd think about it until this afternoon when I was writing this, but I did. But, you know, many times we forget the love that we have with our brothers and sisters in Christ. After all, here's my family. Amen. Here's my family right here. You know, my earthly family, they've lived a long way away from me for a long time. For the last 20 years, you people have been my earthly family. You know, those who are in the world have no hope and have fear. We who are in Christ have assurance that we have a family. Amen. You know, it'd be so difficult to go through life not knowing if you are loved or not. You know, having the emptiness in your life, feeling no one loves you, and fearing the future without that love. You know, um, there are many living this way right now, not only outside the church, but also inside the church. You know, we have people in the church who don't feel that they're loved. Right, Chuck? <laughs> if I didn't pick on him, he wouldn't think he was loved, amen? Yeah, but once we've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, we never again have to worry about if we are loved by someone. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24 says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be con uh, content with what things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Listen to me. That's love. God says, I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to be with you all the time. You don't have to worry about never being loved because I'm here. Wow, praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. But you know, there's a curse of fear. There's a curse of fear. This may be the greatest curse to man. Fear dishonors God because it discredits him. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 31, it says, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore dost thou doubt? Remember the story of Peter? Jesus is walking on the water. Comes up a little ways from the boat. Peter says, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come out upon the water. He says, okay, come on, Peter. Come on. You come out. So what did Peter do? He gets out of the boat. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was in a perfectly good boat, I don't think I would try to get out and walk on the water, amen, unless it was in the middle of winter in Wisconsin or in Minnesota. But he gets out and he starts walking on the water. He's walking on top of the water towards the Lord. And he's just like this, walking towards the Lord. All of a sudden he's going, uh-oh, this is not good. After all, the waves are starting to splash him in the knees. And he starts to sink. And he's going down slowly. Like that guy the other day in the quicksand, going down slowly. All of a sudden he says, Lord, save me. Now the Bible says that Jesus stretched out his hand, picked him up out of the water, and put him on the boat. Now Peter was a pretty good sized person, I would believe, because he was a fisherman. He had to have a lot of muscles and had to be a pretty good sized guy. And yet Jesus reached down in the water. Think about this for a minute. He had his clothes on. His clothes were wet. Just think how heavy his clothes were. 
And yet Jesus just reached down and picked him up and put him up on the boat. I mean, that took a lot right there. But listen, Peter doubted who the Lord really was. You know, Jesus told him to come on out. And he began to sink. He didn't trust the Lord. You know, why worry when we can pray, amen? After all, that was probably one of the shortest prayers ever said. Lord, save me. Three words. Good prayer, right? But you know, fear produces weakness. In Joshua chapter 7, verse 5, it says, And the men of Ai smote <coughs> of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even from uh, Shishprim, to the, uh, smote them in the going down, Wherefore, the hearts of the people melted and became as water. The people became afraid and ran for their lives. Listen, they had just conquered Jericho. Now they're going after this little tiny town, Ai, and they get whooped up on. And they took off and they went running for their lives. Why? Because they were afraid. They were afraid of what was going to happen to them. You know, a soldier in battle is at his weakest time when he becomes afraid of the enemy. When a soldier becomes afraid of what is ahead of him, that is the weakest time in that soldier's life. Fear discourages the devil, or encourages the devil. It makes him want to defeat us. Fear disqualifies us for service. In Judges chapter 7, verse 3, it says, Now therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people... 20 and 2,000, and there remained 10,000. As we recall the story of this, it was Gideon. And here we see that, that God says, you tell everybody who's afraid of going into battle, they can go home. So he did. There's only 10,000 left. And you know how the story went. God says, okay, take them down to the river and have them drink. And whoever doesn't laugh like a dog, I don't want them. There were 300 left. Gideon took those 300 men. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was part of the 300 going against an innumerable number of other soldiers, I think I might be a little bit frightened. But yet they still did it, and they won. They had a great victory. But not only that, but fear produces bondage. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 15, it says, And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Fear, believe it or not, can grip us to a point that it won't let go. Fear destroys and tears people down. Psalms chapter 53 and verse 5. There were they in great fear. There were no fear was. For God has scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame, because God hath despised them. You know, it does not bind up, it tears down. Fear tears us down, believe it or not. But you know, what is the cure then for fear? What's the cure for fear? You know, if you fear loneliness, God says, I am with thee. I want to go back to the verse that we started with, Isaiah 41.10. It says, fear thou not, for I am, what? I am with thee. 
I am with thee. Who is with you? God. God is with you. If you fear loneliness, you've got a friend that sticks closer to, than a brother, and that's the Lord. You know, if we are lonely and if God is with us, we should never be fearful of being alone. You know, many times this is easier said than done, isn't it? We need to realize we have a friend who will always be there. He's always going to be there. He's only a prayer away. If you feel helpless, God says, I am thy God. I am thy God. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. You know, he is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's all-wise. He's all-sufficient. How can we feel helpless when we realize how great God is? How can we feel powerless when we have a great God with us? You know, when Satan tempts us, we know that God's there. Think about Jesus being tempted. Now, Jesus was in the wilderness for how long? 40 days. In 40 days, he was tempted. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He came out of the wilderness after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And what's the first thing Satan tempted him with? Food. Hey, if you're the son of God, cause those stones to be turned to bread. Right? Listen, what we need to realize is this, is that we can fight off Satan and Satan's temptation. But do you feel like a failure? God says, I will help thee. After all, it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. You know, don't let life's responsibilities crush you. God is going to help you. You know, you're never a failure as long as God is with you. Amen. You're never a failure as long as God is with you. He'll always help you to overcome whatever you're going through. Do you, feel, do you fear death? The verse goes on to say, I will uphold thee. Fear thou not, for I am, thy, I, will be with, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You know, there is no dark valley when he's with us. There's no dark valley whatsoever if the Lord is with us. Notice it says, I will uphold thee with my right hand. You know, the right hand in a person is your strongest hand. And God is saying, listen to me, I am going to uphold thee, and I'm going to grab a hold of you, and I'm going to hold you in my right hand. Nobody can take you out. Wow. I'm glad I'm being held in God's right hand. Amen? Amen. You know, the fear of God is the cure for all of our fears. In Psalms 19.9, it says, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. In Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13, it says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, anarchy, and the evil way, and a forward mouth do I hate. Listen, we saw the causes of fear. We saw the curse of fear. And we saw the cure for fear. You know, if you have fears in your life, give them over to the Lord. He'll take care of them for you. If you say, well, I don't know if God will take and answer my prayer. Well, are you saved? Or do you know for sure that if you were to die right now, <coughs> that you'd be absent from this body and present with the Lord, like the verse I read earlier? Do you understand that you need to be born again 
in order to get into the kingdom of God? After all, we're all what? Sinners. There's a penalty for our sin. The Bible says for the wages of the penalty of sin is what? Death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We need to take and understand that Jesus died for us on that cross. It was what he did on the cross that gives us salvation. Gives us the hope to overcome our fears. All we need to do is accept him. All we need to do is accept him as Lord and Savior of our life. And if we do, we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Are you saved tonight? Are you sure that if you would close your eyes in death, you'd open them in glory? If not, you need to tonight. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for your love. I just thank you so much for this message that we can overcome fear. Father, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you did on the cross. With our head bowed and every eye closed for just a minute, maybe there's somebody here tonight you're saying, you know, preacher, I can't remember a time or a place where I asked Jesus into my heart. I can't remember that. I have no one to help me get through my fear because I don't have the Lord living in, in me. If that's you, I want to pray for you tonight. Anyone like that? Quickly, quietly, just raise your hand, put it back down. Anyone at all? I'm not sure that I'm saved. I don't know where I'd go if I were to die tonight. Maybe you're here tonight and you're saying, you know, preacher, I'm fearful of what's ahead of me in my life. There's some things that I'm going through right now that I'm afraid of. Would you pray for me? Is there anyone like that? Quickly, quietly. Hands all over the auditorium. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you so much for being honest. Tonight we're going to open the altar, and if you want to come to the altar and pray, that God will help you overcome your fears. I want you to come tonight. Just come to the old-fashioned altar. Get down and just pour your heart out to him. As the piano plays softly, let's all stand. The piano plays softly. Won't you come? Won't you come to the altar tonight? Won't you come? The altar's open for you to pray. Won't you come? If you're not sure that you're saved, you're not 100% sure that if you were to die right now, you'd spend eternity in heaven. Won't you come? I'd like to have somebody take the Bible and show you how you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if something would happen to you, you'd spend eternity in heaven. And that you, too, would have a friend that would stick closer than a brother. Won't you come tonight? Won't you come? out at the altar tonight praying helping asking God to help them overcome their fears what about you tonight what about you no greater joy than to know that all we need to do is come to the Lord and he'll take and help us to get through what we're going through that's what he's promised to do. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He's always there for us. only a prayer away. All we need to do is just take and talk to him.
turn your hymn number 167. Sing just one verse. 